What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and here's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Have you ever felt like your iPhone was getting slower? The longer you owned it, the more updates you applied. Well, here are five iPhone 4S models, five years apart. One in iOS 5, one in iOS 6, one in iOS 7, one in iOS 8, and one on iOS 9. So let's compare the iPhone 4S on every major firmware it ever shipped with. I think it's quite the miracle, in fact, that Apple even supported iOS 9 on the iPhone 4S. That's really crazy. Here are the firmwares we're looking at. 5.1, 6.1, 7.1.2, 8.4.1, .1, and 9.2.1. So shutting down and starting up in 3, 2, 1. These are all attached on the same power bank. iOS 6 coming in first place. Immediately afterwards, we've got iOS 5 coming in second place. And we're going to have to wait for the rest of these. I'm not going to cut this portion of the video. I want you to see really how long it takes for uh, the newer firmwares to boot up. Is it justifiable for those features? Who knows? But iOS 7 is next, and that leaves two firmwares, iOS 8, which comes in fourth, and iOS 9 comes in last in a very long time. I mean, man, did the iPhone 4S get slow as uh, the firmwares went on. So there it is. Next, here is the app switcher. Now you'll notice to activate it on the older firmwares, it's faster. To use it productively, it's actually better on iOS 9, iOS 8, and iOS 7. We have a visible delay on the notification center uh, going down the spectrum iOS 9 is slower. Control Center isn't available on the first two, but visible delay there as well. Spotlight Search, visibly slower on iOS 8, 7, and 9. Siri begins listening the fastest on iOS 5 and 6, then iOS 9, then iOS 7 and 8. Surprisingly, the newer firmware isn't better here. Actual response time to your question is better on the newer firmwares. This is a server-side thing here, and is definitely more apparent on the newer firmwares. iOS 5 and 6, almost twice as slow. Now I tried to time these as accurately as possible to the millisecond when editing. So uh, next up, let's go ahead and open up settings here. Pretty quick, but definitely visibly slower on newer firmwares. Submenus also slower. And this is timed, you know, extremely precisely. I tried to be as accurate as possible. It may not seem like much, but these delays do add up throughout your day, throughout your month, throughout your year. You know, that's going to add up to hours of time. It's important to have a fast loading camera. You don't want to lose that shot. On iOS 5 and on iOS 6, those are the absolute fastest. When we slow it down, we can see that it focuses and it actually is available to take pictures, I'd say half a second to a second faster. And while a couple milliseconds, half a second might not matter on other applications, here it matters a lot. And as it gets slower, that worries me. I don't like that. Even though a lot of us don't use 4S's, you know, it's still there. So next up, maps. Even loading the application was a lot faster on older firmwares. But when we actually want to get directions, let's say to Voodoo Donuts here in Portland, Oregon, when you actually type the directions and then get directions to the area, definitely a lot faster and more responsive on older firmwares. Of course, you don't have the new fancy features like iOS 9, you know, near you locations and all that, but maybe it's better to be simpler. So when you actually type the directions, as you can see, they're mostly available so much faster on the older firmwares and even getting navigation directions a little bit slower on the newer firmwares. And this one matters to me a lot too. I mean, if I want to enter an address real quick, I need it fast. So uh, next up, let's go ahead and open up the weather application and the spectrum goes all the way down to iOS 9. It loads almost instantly on the older firmwares. And here's the app store. So this is a web-based application and it actually loaded the fastest in iOS 7, then iOS 6, and then iOS 5, which can't even display it properly, then iOS 8 and 9. And let's go ahead and test its counterpart, iTunes, same deal, web-based, and here they go. So the animation to open up any application on the older firmwares is almost instant. You know, there's no drawn out animation to make it look all pretty and that's good. So uh, actually loading the iTunes store doesn't work very well on iOS 5 and on iOS 8 and 9. Oh man, does that take a while. So eventually iOS 9 loads and then iOS 8 after a little nudging here. Now these are some of the heaviest applications available on iOS. Uh, so let's try something a little bit lighter. Something you're going to be using several times a day, messages almost instant on the older firmwares and a couple second delay visibly on messages on the newer ones. So phone application instantly available on older firmwares takes a while to appear on the newer ones. Something I use a lot, music. When the newer versions are asking you to sign up for Apple Music, they take a while to load on their own. And let's wrap this up here with a Safari test. So loading Safari pretty quick on almost all of them, a little delay on newer ones, but 
web pages. This is something I was shocked to see. You know, the newer iOS gets, the better the engine to load web pages. However, it was abundantly clear to me that that wasn't the case. When we tested it against iOS 5 and 6, those actually loaded the complete web page faster. It fully loaded last on the newer version. So next, html5test.com. Just want to compare the compatibility of the browsers. And uh, this one loaded a little bit faster on the newer version. So I guess it depends on the website. But we can see a steady progression here from iOS 5 to 9. And next up, Geekbench on all of these. So not as much of a difference as I thought there would be. iOS 5 Geekbench basically combines the scores together. Second place goes to iOS 7. Third to iOS iOS 8 and 4 to iOS 9, 5th to iOS 6. And lastly, let's go ahead and run a Wi-Fi speed test. So some algorithms did improve in the newer versions of iOS, and it's apparent here that the actual Wi-Fi speed for download is faster from the same distance from the router. So that's definitely a good change for once in the newer versions. And the very last comparison I wanted to show you, nothing very accurate or scientific here, but I just wanted to say that typing on newer versions of iOS on the smaller, older phone has become so frustrating. It's so laggy, and sometimes when you're loading something and typing at the same time, it's almost unusable. But guys, there you go. That is my comparison of the iPhone 4S throughout its lifespan. It's going to receive one major update, iOS 9.3. Hopefully that'll fix some slowdown issues, uh, hopefully get some of that speed back. But I just wanted to say this video took me all day. It was extremely frustrating. And to find these phones on these firmwares was almost impossible, but I did it. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for many more videos. Peace.